Uh, just uh, got me relaxing in the backyard here. It's a beautiful evening, Sunday evening. It's just reflecting on uh, the sound of the water and uh, beautiful outdoors and kind of like the meanings of life. Uh, water is very important as we know we would dehydrate faster than you would ever starve and it's the common denominator for life like every living object has water needs water and but that's not enough because you could have a stagnant pond and that pond would have life it's just not positive life there would be an anaerobic bacteria is growing fungus is growing but that's not positive. We want a circulation of oxygen, nutrition, and get a, 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 a vibrant environment where things can live. And that's what motion and water. We have the wind, the chimes, representing motion, invisible motion, forces around us. And we have the water, sustaining life and the movement thereof. Just like this uh, fountain, the water gets pumped to the top and it falls down naturally. So does the, the, the sun, evaporates the water out of the soil, takes it up into the clouds where it saturates the clouds and becomes too heavy and it later on cools and falls as water or rain. Then it sits on the ground and goes through the ground and filters all of the negative influences and becomes pure again where it becomes evaporated and it becomes a cycle we got to think about that cycle of life and movement supporting the cycle of life so we're going to go around and talk a little bit about some growth and we'll see you in a second hi here we are in the front yard and last time i showed you this garden i was in march i was doing some spring cleaning and unfortunately I didn't I didn't think about doing this video when this rose bush was in full bloom it's about three or four dozen of beautiful roses on there this is not home and garden by any stretch of the imagination but I just want to talk about the growth you'll see here in this uh, sedum when I tripped it right down I knew it was gonna be growing it's still probably gonna grow up to about in here and I want to influence the positive growth for it uh, last year they were kind of flopping all over the place so this year I thought I'd start this cage and confine it to come up and through here to offer it some support uh, later on when it would be more difficult uh, later on. Some things you have to do as they're growing, much like our body's tissue is what I'm trying to talk about. Giving a positive influence over a long period of time will get the ultimate results that you're looking for. Then we're going to go down here and we're going to see that this, uh, this is going to be a beautiful mum. Uh, this one here is uh, burgundy, I believe, and the one that's back on the left there is uh, white. So let's take a look at a couple other things we got. To see my my latest uh, friend, the uh, tiger lilies. I just got these from a client of mine. He's generous enough to give me some. Uh, I didn't have anything over here, so I put these in the ground yesterday. It's been very hot for the past two days, so they will adapt. And they're not going to do much this year. As a matter of fact, the blooms that were coming out got broken in the process. So you uh, can probably see down here. I just put them into the ground, so they may bloom down there. I can put them in a vase with enough hydration. They may open up. Uh, they may stay here, but definitely next year, these are going to start to be uh, a nice addition. But I don't expect them to do much this year. I'm just going to help them with positive influence, oxygen, nutrition, and they will grow on their own. So here I'm in the, in the front garden between these bushes. I wanted to point out uh, this little guy. Take a look at this little guy down here. That is a blue hosta. His name is Elvis. So Elvis is on the property. I just thought he's pretty cool. So another thing with growth is you can't stop things from growing. I got this big tree in front of the house. If you look up there, if I'm not careful, that tree is going to start hitting the house. So I'm going to have to get that trimmed back because you cannot slow down growth. You can only offer it some influence over its, its positive or negative influences. So I'm standing in the front porch and to the uh, immediate left would be this butterfly bush. This is going to bloom out with some beautiful ice cream cone kind of... Uh, Flowers. Okay. Here in the front of the driveway, I just got my mom's old wash basin, 
and uh, I just wanted to put some flowers in here, but uh, one year when we were doing that, some seeds from a tree next door landed in here. There's a poplar, there's a Manitoba maple. They obviously don't belong here, but if they wanted to fight for life, and, and they obviously have, they've been here for about three, four years in this wash basin. But uh, because, like I said, I'm not going to be able to stop growth, these are becoming so root bound that eventually they're going to strangle their own, uh, they're going to be fighting for oxygen and, and nutrition, and at some point they will limit their growth. But I just wanted to show you that there because you know what, they're fighting hard. I guess I could transplant them. Uh, I'm not sure where on the property I'd want to put them, but you can't stop growth, and I'll have to deal with that at some point in the future. This is one of my favorite parts here of the property. I've been working pretty hard on this for the past couple of years. Uh, you'll see this uh, lovely gardens in here. We had some tulips that came up, some irises that came up. The mums are getting ready. We got some uh, orange stuff. I don't even know what some of this stuff is, but it's looking quite nice. Got geraniums, got all sorts of things that uh, flower at different times. It's nice and clean. Right now, it's beautifully weeded. Just went through it uh, today. But, uh, this tire swing is where this old tire swing used to be when I was a kid. We used to use this all the time. We used to swing in this tree. You know, I really, the difference between structural and functional healing is right now this looks structurally okay. It's swinging. It looks like you could jump on it. But one of the reasons why I don't let kids on it, other than the fact I grow stuff in it, is that I don't trust its function. This rope's out here experienced to the, uh, exposed to the weather, and it's going to become degenerative. And it's going to start to, it's, it can't, like our bodies can regenerate with gentle challenge. That would be getting tougher and tougher and tougher. But this is just going to get weaker and weaker and weaker. So with rain and heat, it's going to just cause the uh, tissue to break down. So I wouldn't trust my 175 pounds on there. But the tree's old too, you know, it took a lot of abuse. But right now, structurally, it looks good, but it may not be completely functional. But that's why when we heal things in our body, we have to give them a gentle active range of motion gentle stretch and we can do that anywhere gentle stretch and gentle contraction I can lift things up I can challenge things with anything I mean my own body gentle contraction gentle stretch guide your body's growth what else we got here to show you How about if you come on uh, this side over here, Vanessa? Here's another one of my favorite plants. You can tell this is only like a two or three year old uh, plant and garden. I've got some petunias around here and I don't even know what else. But this is a hydrangea and it's taken a long time this year. I was really surprised. And it's not growing off of its sticks. Uh, a lot of plants grow off of the structure from the year before. This is actually regrowth from the uh, root system. As I'm learning, different plants you know, require uh, different, well, as we know, but you can see there's some, there's some flowers out here. Uh, I guess it's a different type of uh, some of the other hydrangeas that I see, but they're small. I'm really enjoying that. As we come up here, the Rose of Sharon, this really just started blooming a couple years ago. This is just beautiful. It's underneath the pear tree. Um, it'll be blooming now. We're about, uh, I don't know, we're about the 6th, the 7th of July, and this will be blooming right through until the first week of September. And I believe this one's pink, but not so good with the colors. But you're going to see behind me, there is the vegetable garden. And things are growing in there. So, hmm, come on up over my shoulder here. So from what I think <laughs> that you can see from here is the centralized garden. That's not doing so well with all the seeds. I got, uh, I should have some onions at the far end, carrots, they're really, really wheat. And then we got some uh, beets and some radishes that are doing quite well. And then as we come up this way, we got some empty space where there were supposed to have been some other plants, but they didn't develop. <laughs> they didn't germinate. They didn't even start their, their life and growth process here on the, on the, uh, well, the planet, my property. And then we got some lettuce there. But uh, I put down some, uh, you can probably see I got the little framework there. I got some... Uh, uh, landscape cloth, try and keep the weeds down. I got some green and yellow peppers here in the back part. The far side over there, there's eight cherry tomatoes and there's uh, some big uh, uh, beefsteak tomatoes on that side. I don't know, we'll see. I'm not so good at gardening. And then up this side here, see, uh, I got some hot peppers and some jalapeno peppers. And we got, uh, well, right down close here, we got a pumpkin plant somewhere in the corner over here. I'll let you figure out where you can uh, find that. Let's tour over to the sun garden.
Here I'm in my newest favorite part of the garden. This is the sun garden. And as you can see, I've got a, a, a semicircular shaped front part with a little pathway going through here and leading back so that we can weed and uh, we've got the stones that we can go through there. I don't, again, I don't know what a lot of this stuff is, but uh, I know I got some bride's blush and uh, some other things. I talked to a lot of different clients and the lady selling me the stuff and just kind of put in anything that has a bloom, anything that has some nice greenery. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing some of these things shoot up. These are supposed to be just beautiful. I don't know what to call, but they, they start to flower. I think they're going to grow another foot or so. They start to flower from the top down. So really looking forward to that. In behind me, there's some uh, phlox. It's going to be beautiful pink for uh, probably about a month later on. And uh, I got some of this lower stuff in here. The idea is to guide the growth and say, well, you know, how do I want this garden to look in five years? This is the way it looks now, first year out. Uh, Janine's daughter, Nelly, was so kind as to help me, uh, you know, organize this. And of course, all Janine's hard work and, uh, with the weeding, and especially now with the, you know, today, you're going to see she just finished watering this. So it's very well taken care of uh, in its first year. We'll see how this turns out in, in years to come if I'm still here. But this is one of the thoughts that I have is to learn how to uh, to uh, guide growth and work with uh, uh, living structures and, and beings like people. Uh, but I, I really want to start working more with water and therapeutic uses of water, the hydrotherapy, which is therapeutic use of water for, for therapeutic purposes, which would be for hot or for cold, to bring blood out via arteries or push it back via veins, to have manual control of swelling, inflammation, and we can do this in many ways. We could probably do this with um, hot tubs, whirlpool saunas, showers, and if I could do something that was indoors and outdoors with, with plants like this, outdoors, semi-private areas with hot tubs, some showers, some cooling showers, uh, pathways, that's kind of my dream, my passion, uh, something I've been working towards for a long time, not quite there yet, but I would certainly like to expand on this uh, human and vegetation growth concept and blend things because it's so tranquil and it's, uh, uh, it, it's actually beautiful just to watch things grow and uh, participate in the guidance of their growth and it's so transferable to our own bodies and our growth and uh, I guess I just like to share that with more and more people in, in a better fashion than it's been done right now but this is where I'm at right now so what else we got? You see these little plants, these little growth a couple months ago there was nothing here so over the past couple of months, I've watched this rise against the shed, which is gray color as we come up. You're going to see exactly how tall these are here in July. And as they grew, again, to help them with their future here and to allow them to feel, look, and be their best, I put them behind this rope. And as they've grown up, I just kind of keep tucking them behind this rope so that when they get so tall, and they start to bloom and they get heavy, especially with rain and such, they tend to fall and droop. I like to prevent that. So as many as I can, when they're ready, I just put them inside and help to currently guide their growth. I can't see this contrast, but I imagine the dark green against the, the light gray shed. In my mind, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> and as we switch over here, actually, if you can just follow through, I've got another arbor, um, just kind of as a gateway to the, uh, the garden. Unfortunately, it's not a magical garden because a lot of work and a lot of assembly is required. Let's go take a quick look. This is the the, look, the view from inside looking out. Um, you're going to see the centralized raised garden again with some of the petunias that I've got in there. I just want some uh, flash of color. But uh, the tomatoes across the far side. Uh, it should be looking pretty good today. I'd suggest today is a day that we're winning. Um, Janine and I were out there for a couple of hours and weeding and then of course, uh, tearing out all the weeds from the pathways and uh, with uh, watering tonight, you know, I'm sure it looks uh, pretty good. It's nice and cool here, actually. It's, it's this beautiful evening. Uh, no mosquitoes as of yet, but they're entitled to life, but just not on my property. <laughs> so you see uh, the weeds I got here. We dragged them all over here, and for all intents and purposes, these are dying. Um, I've, I've taken them out of the ground, so I've exposed them with way too much oxygen and not enough water, so they're going to dehydrate and we'll put those into yard waste bags and put those to the curb. It's all part of the natural life and death cycle in, uh, in, in, in 
generation after generation and trying to provide, provide a property positive uh, energy of, of growth here on the property so the weeds have to go and, and the good stuff stays. I, I just trimmed up some of these forsythias and put in a little tiny lilac. Maybe you can see that little tiny one in there with some uh, some tiger lilies. Again, we don't expect those to grow this year. Maybe in time, uh, we'll see what happens uh, with that. And then, of course, you'll see the big poplar and uh, lilac on the front side of that. It didn't bloom this year, but uh, it is a beautiful, impressive lilac when it does bloom. This year, it was just a little bit too warm, and then uh, the blooms came out, and then they got froze, frozen with the, uh, the frost. So, uh, again, natural life cycles. Uh, you know, there's sometimes there's a lot of things going against us. Like, I'm legally blind. My father's an epileptic. Uh, my son's 22. So there's always you know, something against us, uh, things that we have to uh, fight. There's some good things and positive and negative things in everything. Uh, but uh, trying to find the positive way of, of life and living and active uh, lifestyle. So gardening is a good part of that. It feeds back into it. And I certainly learn more about the body and the things that I believe in. Uh, positive influence over a long period of time and for us happens to be active range of motion, gentle stretch, gentle contraction, um, but over a long period of time to guide that body's growth because it will grow. Like I showed you, you cannot stop growth. Uh, one last thing and uh, we'll call that a quits for now. Just another example of, of growth and uh, things desire to live. This was an old apple tree and uh, it was kind of in the way, it was pretty ugly and it's a pretty uh, infected apples, they're little crab apples. So I chopped it down and uh, put a little garden around it. But then there was a little stem that was starting to grow. And I'm like, if it wants to grow, I'm gonna let it. I'm gonna watch it, I'm gonna help to mold it a little bit better this time. And they do have beautiful uh, blooms. So I'm just gonna let that grow for a little while. I'm not gonna let it get out of control. Uh, eventually I, like, so I'll have to deal with that and maybe I'll have to cut it down. But I kind of felt bad getting rid of the, uh, you know, the first one, the granddad of the apple trees there. but. So today's a day where I consider like we're actually winning with the property. The uh, you know the gardens are looking pretty nice. Things are coming in. Got a green pepper getting started. That's cool. But then as you look around at the grass, definitely losing on the grass side of things because weeds are still growing. It's dehydrated, not getting enough water. I uh, haven't had rain here for about a week and a half, two weeks. So it'll probably become you know a big problem without the water. And uh, same thing with our body. So just keep in mind once once we uh, get things uh, going in a positive direction. It doesn't take long before some negativity to come in there. So sitting around a little bit too much, um, things get a little bit creeping shorter and shorter. You kind of start feeling good. So then uh, you forget about doing these things. But it's just active range of motion, gentle stretch, gentle contraction on a regular basis, tucking the chin back, opening the shoulders and stretch and, and, and breathe. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, extend your back back. Uh, some principles of leg back and stretch your hip flexors. Use your knees and turn your knees nice and easy. And rotate your back nice and easy. Active range of motion, gentle stretch, gentle contraction. But the key again is movement. Get the, the fluids of life flowing through your body. Some assembly may be required and you do have responsibility to yourself for how you feel, look, and perform. I would just like to suggest that you have the influence that with gentle stretch, active range of motion, gentle contraction, you can guide your body's growth to a better future. And that's all I'm hoping you're going to get out of this. And thanks for uh, taking this little garden tour, and hopefully we'll have a, a, a bigger, better tour coming up in the, in the, uh, in the fall.